From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is Speaking with the Enemy. 30 minutes away from what's clearly the CFL game of the week as the Tiger Cats and Stan Peters meet at McMahon Stadium on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. This is Tiger Cats pregame presented by Journey Rewards Pubs. Andy and Emily Thompson with you. Time for Speaking with the Enemy presented by Red Tag. Who says summer is over? Set your own rules and secure your winter escape in the hottest Caribbean destinations with redtag.ca. With resorts selling out fast, now is the time to secure your spot on the beach. See the world your way with redtag.ca. Look now. Hey, for 25 years, he has been the play-by-play voice of the red and white on 770 CHQR. Mark Steven, super happy that you've accepted the role as enemy off the Thai Cats Audio Network. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what I am tonight, right? So there you go. Hey, Mark. Yeah, you know, no, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great one. Mark, you know, the Stampeders are averaging a league high 30.8 points per game while the Tiger Cats are allowing 26.5, which is second worst in the CFL. Now, do you believe, like the three of us, that this game is actually going to be tight? Well, I do. I think the ground game is where it might be decided as well, simply because uh, the Thai Cats' uh, ground defense is very good. The Stamps have the top-ranked uh, running attack in the league, so I think it'll be very interesting to see the Tiger Cats appear to have righted the ship after some very, very uh, tough losses, and you know, a lot on the line for them, a lot on the line for the Stampeders too. So I'm looking forward to a very good game. Stampeders are trying to uh, lock down second in the West. Uh, they're right there with BC. BC has the tiebreaker, so Stampeders' margin for error is pretty. Low. Limited. Mark, when it comes to Calgary and their sacks allowed, they have they only have 13 sacks allowed in 15 games, and no team has had less than one, average less than one sack per game since the 2004 Hamilton Ticats, which oddly enough is the last time Hamilton won at McMahon Stadium <laughs> uh, with Danny McManus. What makes this team have that kind of stat is it the is it the uh the the quarterback play or is it the offensive uh, play calling well, I would say both have a role in it for sure. The line is very good. As Sean McEwen in the middle is very good, and uh, Ryan Sevier, Derek Dennis, up until uh, recently when he suffered a serious leg injury, was having a tremendous season of tackle. So they've got five very good linemen. They're well coached there. Uh, also, I think the quarterbacks have helped. Uh, you mentioned the play calling as part of it, but both Bo Levi Mitchell and Jake Mayer, they may not be the fleetest afoot, the best runners, but they do just enough to escape the pressure or release the ball quickly enough to also make sure that they're rarely in the grass. But it is really impressive, I've got to say, that we're this far into the season and they've allowed so few in terms of the number of sacks. Mark, Malik Henry is ruled out for tonight's game. How do you think Sean Bain will rise to the occasion? I know he's suiting up tonight. He'll do very well. He's uh, both a returner and a receiver. He's maybe not quite as consistent as Malik is, but he's got a lot of speed. I mean, in the game in Toronto in August, he... uh blew down the sidelines about 80 yards on one of the first plays of the game. So he's very good. This is his second year here. So he'll be a very good stand-in. But make no mistake, this is Malik Henry's position when he returns. And I would think it would be as early as next week that he returns. He did suffer a bit of an ankle roll. and It just hasn't healed quite as fast as they thought. But I would think by next week he'll be back. But uh, Sean Bain will certainly be an electrifying receiver as well. So who else should be should we be looking out for to replace that production of Malik Henry since his injury in in six games he's got over four catches every game he's got five touchdowns he's got you know a 30 plus yard almost in every game uh, leading the CFL with 422 yak yards how are you going to replace that who else are we looking for well, uh, Trey Odoms Dukes is a young guy who's just on the roster. He's played a couple of games. He's also on the roster, a big, long, lean receiver as well. He's played very well. Also, uh, looking forward to the rookie, Jalen Philpot, who's uh, shown some great speed and, uh, you know, see how he does. He's obviously a very good player they're counting on, not only now, but in the future. So, those are some of the guys that I think will help fill the void. And if they don't, they've got Kadeem Carey on the ground to take care of uh, business. He's having a superb season and probably you can make a case as Calgary's outstanding player this year. Mark, we know how tough it is to play in Calgary. What do you think attributes to that? Is it the fans, the stadium, weather conditions? What do you think it is? 
Well, I think most years the Stampeders just have been very good, and they win a lot of games outside of Calgary too. So they've, uh, you know, just established a real culture here. Uh, the stadium it's situated in such a way where you maybe don't appreciate. I mean, talking about the uh, configuration of the stands, but at field level, it is very noisy and intimidating. Uh, maybe it doesn't come across. Uh, you know, I've watched games back, and I say, "Good gosh, that was a crazy loud building." So those are some of the issues. It, it is an intimidating place. I'm sure some of the players struggle with the altitude. I mean. I mean, it's, uh, you know, 3,500 feet, which is uh, a little bit different for most people who play at different uh, altitudes, and it's not easy to get used to. So those factors, a good team, uh, an intimidating, a noisy crowd, and uh, altitude have all combined to make this a really uh, challenging place to play. And, uh, you know, them and Winnipeg this year both became the first teams to win 400 games at home in a CFL uh, lifetime. Well, 14 straight seasons above 500. That ties a CFL record from the uh, Edmonton team back from 84 to 97. you got to give a lot of credit to uh, John Hoffnangle, Dave Dickinson, and, and uh, you know, from the top down, really, in their organization. I want to flip to the uh, the defense for a sec. you got Cameron Judge leads the CFL uh, with 10 big plays, quote-unquote. That's forced turnovers via interception, fumble recovery, forced fumble, or turnover on downs. And, uh, you know, next to him, you got Jameer Thurman and, uh, and Williams. We, you know, the Ticat fans just came off seeing a pretty good trio of linebackers in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Would you make an argument that the Calgary Stampeders are up there with the likes of the Rough Riders as far as the top linebacking core in the CFL? I think I would. You know, Saskatchewan's pair, uh, Dean and Sankey, have put up some really, really impressive numbers this year. But you're right about Cam Judge. Uh, you know, I think he's exceeded their expectations, and they were fairly high. You nailed some of the reasons why. He's been, first of all, uh, uh, he just runs like crazy. The guy never quits. Uh, he's uh, up there in tackles. He's made a lot of big plays and caused a lot of havoc. So, yeah, he's been uh, really tremendous. And Jameer Thurman, I mean, Darnell Sankey had a fabulous season last year, but one reason that they felt they could let him go and maybe not chase him uh, as hard as he maybe would have liked in free agency is they knew they could move Jameer Thurman into the middle, and he has uh, met their challenge and their expectations. So uh, those two, I think you nailed it, have been pretty good. Mentioned Kobe Williams, the other linebacker. Uh, he's one of a long list of guys who have played that position this year. They had several guys injured, but uh, he's held his own as well. You know, Mark, going back to that week two matchup, I mean, I guess it's hard to remember for many people, Ticat fans as well, too, that Hamilton had a 24 to nothing lead. I'm sure Coach Dave Dickinson has reminded his team that this is a very dangerous opponent. Well, sure it is. And he said he looked back as he does that this week, and he said, you know, with a little bit of time between the game, I mean, it's been almost four months, I guess. You know, he he looked back and he said, I still don't know how we won that game, but uh, win it, they did. Uh, Titus Wall, a uh, rookie, uh, you know, made his mark there. Jameer Thurman with the pick after that crazy ping pong ball. Uh, you know, it just got going the Stampeders' way, and they were able to pull it out. I, I don't think that's a real strategy you can count on all the time, coming back from 24 points down but they did and it was a crazy crazy game and uh, you're right I think they are fully aware that Ty Cats when they're moving uh, all the parts in the same direction are a very good team well Titus Wall out for um, second week in a row at least there um, what on the defensive line there's been a quite a bit of movement but a couple mainstays you got Rose and Lemon uh, Rose looks like he's on the inside he's been playing he's been moving around am I am I correct in saying that Largely a bit. Him and Derek Wigan flip, flip flop inside, but uh, he's been on the field for a lot of plays, yeah, for sure. Oh, and, and, and you touch John Lemon, he's getting better with age. He, he's amazing this year. <laughs> yeah, so he's got, uh, it really is. He got 12 sacks, number, which is good for number two in the league, which brings him to 90 in his career and uh, chasing a, a face or a name that a lot of uh, listeners will know, Mike Walker, who had recent, mm -hmm. recent Hall of Fame inductee, uh, sitting at number 14th all time. Uh, with 96 so um you know sean sean I, I was actually on the team when he first came in uh, as a rough rider into the cfl okay. i remember he made an impression on me in, in uh, the first week that he came in so kudos to him he's a good guy and uh, very <laughs> very much a character well, yeah, it's just crazy with that kind of production how he's moved around as several teams i don't quite understand it but i can say this that uh, when he's here and this is his second tour here it works he's uh, had several tremendous seasons with the stampeders 
This has been Speaking with the Enemy, presented by Red Tag. You can hear the Stampeders call if you're a Calgary fan of tonight's contest on 770 CHQR. Mark Stephen, thank you for being with us, and certainly have a great game.